Hey guys, what's going on? I am Tim Burzens from Amplify Metabolism, and in the final part, part five of our gut microbiome series, we're gonna be talking about one of the most interesting parts, and I think one of the most highest leverage parts um, of the gut microbiome, how to heal your gut and your digestion and all of your food absorption and all of that good stuff. So what is this final step? The final step has to do with the gut-brain connection and specifically the effect of your mind on your gut. So we've talked a little bit about this before. I have a video where I discuss how guilt creates disease. I have a couple other videos where I talk a little bit more about that mind-body connection and how important the mind is for influencing your health because your body is really following your mind. Your body is doing what your mind is dictating, whether you're aware of what your mind is dictating or not. And that's the key point, because the awareness is the most important thing. If you aren't aware that you are sending this negative signal and you're so used to it because you just think that's how things are, then you're gonna continue over and over and over again sending the signal and having no awareness that you're actually thinking these negative thoughts, these guilty thoughts. So when we talk about the gut-brain connection, this is super important because in the research, they've shown how a lot of different bacteria actually, when the, when the gut microbiome has a different population set of bacteria, that it will have different effects on the brain causing things like depression or anger or irritability. And that makes sense because like we've talked about before as well, although the mind is influencing the body, the body is feeding back into the mind. It's this cycle that's happening. And so really what we start to see is that the mind is much quicker from a day to day. It's much more about choosing the direction, whereas the body is much slower to change. It's the power that actually has uh, the ability to change things. And your mind is, is directing habitually what, where your body is going, how your body is changing from a chemical point of view, from a physiological point of view. So with your gut, for example, you might have been thinking uh, thoughts that were angry thoughts for a long time, not recognizing that you're actually angry at something because you're you know, suppressing it or you're unaware of it. And therefore your gut microbiome will reflect the anger that you are consistently sending to it. And therefore have that feedback that when you decide you don't want to be angry anymore, well, your gut's still sending you angry signals. So you have to actually accept the anger, accept that your body is sending that signal up to you, let it be so that you can continue directing it somewhere else. If you get caught in that anger and caught in that signal that it's sending up, now you're perpetuating the same thing over and over again. So it really takes that acceptance, that ability to say, all right, the body is sending me anger, like this energy field of emotions that I feel right now. Okay, I can see it, I can sit with it. And because I'm choosing not to continue to perpetuate that cycle anymore, I can choose differently. I can point into a different direction. And so that's why the mind is so important and why the mind-body connection is really the uh, arbiter of your entire health from the very baseline level. So specifically when we're talking about the gut microbiome, uh, we can see some of these things in the research that actually show really positive effects. So for example, we talked yesterday about how digestion, the di digestive fire is so important because if you can digest and assimilate all of your, the nutrients, then the only thing that's making it to your large intestine is going to be the fiber and that's gonna feed the good bacteria. That was the basis of the video. Well, there's been research done where people would either be put into a very positive state or a very negative state, and then they would measure their salivary enzymes. And they found that specifically lysozyme, which is responsible for killing off the bacteria in the food that you do not want, was raised in the positive state and lowered or completely absent in the negative state. And that's true for a lot of the other digestive enzymes as well. When you're in a good state, your body's producing these enzymes much more rapidly. Well, so that makes perfect sense. If you're in a positive state, you'll be digesting better. And then therefore over time, the gut microbiome will change and reflect the fact that you are now in a more ha a happier, more positive place. But if the body is sending you this negative impulse because that's where it's, it's been for so long and you sit down and go to eat and you're in this negative state and you can't get out of the negative state because you're not willing to let it go, well, now you're just gonna be continuing to be in a negative state, enzymes don't increase, therefore the food triggers more of the negative bacteria, therefore the negative bacteria continue to feed up negative impulses, and the cycle continues over and over again. What it really takes is a step back, a step for you to let go and say, okay, it's all right that this is here, I can accept that this is here. If you can get to that place, now you have a, the ability for the first time to choose differently. 
and it's not necessarily going to be immediate. It's going to be something that you have to continually let go of as it comes up. But each time you let go of it, there will, there will be less and less of it uh, present because you have, will have already let go of some of it. Now, specifically when we're talking about the gut microbiome, the level that we're really going to be discussing is that, that of guilt and pleasure, which is the same as saying that of your ability to receive good things, your ability to receive pleasure, your ability to receive joy. Now, if you feel guilty, you're not going to allow those things in. You're going to think that you're in need of punishment. If you're in need of punishment, you're not going to allow good things to come to you. And especially when we're talking about this, it makes perfect sense because food taste is one of the primary primal pleasures of human existence that food tastes good. We enjoy eating food because then that survives our body. It, it allows our body to function. So the pleasure from food is often blocked by guilt. And then because someone is eating this food and not getting pleasure from it, they now need 10 times more pleasure from food in order to feel okay. So now they're going to be eating way, way, way more food. They're going to be stuffing bags of Oreos down their mouth because the Oreos have this intense pleasure. And because they can't really get pleasure from other foods like their veggies and their fruits, they're getting all their pleasure from the really intense forms. And they need lots of that intense form to fill that gap, to fill that absence of pleasure. Then they're in this place where obviously they're going to have very massive changes in their body because they're eating far more than their body is actually signaling them to, to eat. And if you think about this for a second, in a healthy position, you would be enjoying the food so fully that when you're satisfied, when your body is saying, hey, we're good, I don't need any more food, you would say, that's perfectly good with me too because I'm, I'm so satisfied, oh, pleasure overflowing because I've enjoyed every single bite of every single meal, not only of this meal, but all day I've been in this amazing state. So now I don't need this you know, cheap little pleasure of some extra food in order to feel good. I already feel so good that I don't need it. Well, if you're feeling like that, you're going to listen to your body and you're actually going to be able to work with it in a proper way. But if you're depriving yourself of pleasure because you feel so guilty all the time that you, you know, should have done this better or you should have done, you know, that or you're afraid that you're not good enough. All of these kinds of things are that base guilt that is now blocking you from enjoying the food, from blocking you from enjoying anything in your life. And so therefore you look for those cheap, quick outlets that have intense bursts of pleasure that are far out of balance with what your body really needs and what your body really wants, just so that you can feel okay by getting to that place. So when we're really talking about letting go, we're not saying that you let go of those, you know, of the pleasure, of the intense pleasure. It's saying find pleasure in all things so that you don't go overboard in these intense pleasure areas of your life because that would take you way out of balance. And if you're getting pleasure from everything, then why would you need to do that anyway? The only reason you ever get so out of balance and, and seek that pleasure so strongly is because you don't feel happy. You don't feel joy. You're not allowing yourself to be happy. So when we're talking about the gut microbiome, this is one of the core issues that is important for getting right. So the question then becomes, how do you actually do it? Well, the first one, like I said, is to be aware, to start asking yourself what you're feeling, what you're thinking. Uh, and more importantly, when you're thinking these thoughts or when you're feeling like you're off, recognize that the thoughts that you are thinking, the thoughts that are present, are springing forth out of the soil of the emotion. And so therefore, do not pay attention to the thoughts, but look at the soil of the emotion. And then from that level, identify what it is, what the soil is of that emotion and say, do I want this anymore? Do I need this energy, this soil, which is springing forth the thoughts that I'm thinking? Do I need that energy here? And a better question would be, do I want to release this? And here's the thing, don't force yourself to try to release it. Don't say that you have to let it go. Literally ask yourself and really have a open mind and a kindness towards yourself and say, do I want to release this? Because there will be times when you're not ready to release something, that there'll be something that is, is you're still getting a lot of pleasure out of and you don't want to let go of it, or it just seems too scary and you're not ready for it. And that's okay. It's perfectly okay. But the only way that you will actually continue to grow is if you are able to accept and recognize that you are choosing not to let it go. Because then with that choice, the day will come when you are ready to let it go. Whereas if you feel guilty for not letting it go because you think you always should let everything go, well now we're right back into the trap of these, these negative emotions and you're not able to step back and really see them. But if you're able to step back and see that 
energy field that you feel within your body that is the emotion feel that energy field that's the soil the thoughts spring out of and instead of looking at the thoughts you look at the soil and you say do i want this energy field is this energy field serving me would i be willing to let it go do i want to keep holding on to this field this kind of self-inquiry while you're sitting with the emotion will help you start to distance yourself from it further and further back. And as you distance yourself from it, now you can see it more clearly. You're, you're getting the objective view. You're getting the impersonal view. And from that place, then it becomes so obvious that you don't want to hold on to this, that the, the cheap pleasure of shooting yourself out of balance in order to get this little reward here is only happening because you're so absent of the reward here. There's no pleasure here, so you seek pleasure in this one thing and you finally get it. Well, when you can step back and see that pattern, well, now it's like, okay, well, why would I want to keep doing that? Why don't I just give myself pleasure all the time and enjoy every bit of life? Take, sit down and really enjoy every bite of this food that's so amazing and pick apart the individual flavors. Don't just need this intense signal to in, in order to enjoy food. Enjoy all of it. And once you can get to that place, you're going to be living far more happy life. And not only are you going to be living a more happy life, but now whenever you eat food, it's going to you're going to be far more willing to eat quote unquote healthy foods that you've been pushing against because they don't have that intense uh, stimulus of pleasure that maybe the Oreos or the cookies do. But instead, you will be able to enjoy all different foods for all of the variety and you won't be seeking those cheap thrills anymore. So I recommend just taking a strong intention of every time you sit down to eat, paying attention to what it is you're eating and asking yourself how you can enjoy it more. Also be willing to let go of the, the negative emotions that you feel throughout the day by becoming aware of when it is that you're feeling something. And the thing is, there's tons and tons and tons of suppressed motion, emotions, all this garbage that's beneath you. And we're only aware of this, you know, small little sliver at the top, which is where our conscious mind is, is operating in. So throughout the day, just work with whatever is in front of you, wherever you notice that your emotions are flaring up, that's an important issue. If somebody opposes you in some way and that makes you defensive and you feel this strong need to defend yourself and, and this, this fear of attack and this anger at them for doing so, well, okay, that's a perfect sign. There's an area that you need to start working on, that you need to look at, that you need to see that energy field beneath it, let go of what happened in the world, let go of the thoughts, just look at the energy field and say, is this actually serving me? Do I want this emotion to continue? And of course, the answer is usually no, that, you, that energy field that's there is not pleasant and it's not serving you and it's actually hurting your body. But there is the cheap payoff that you're getting from being able to feel like a victim or feel isolated or feel separate and therefore not responsible. And if you're not responsible, then you're taking the blame off of yourself. So now it's okay that you are somewhere that you don't want to be. But it's not about fault or blame. If you can accept the responsibility without taking blame for what it is, but it just in full acceptance, well, now you're empowered. Now you can actually move forward and change things. So I hope you guys got a lot out of this. Uh, start trying these things day to day uh, and start incorporating them into your life, really getting that awareness of your emotions and your thoughts, really starting to appreciate things more and get more joy out of life. Instead of just squeezing the orange and just letting a little bit of juice come out, really wring it dry, get all of that juice out of it. Take everything you can from life and enjoy this life that we're given. So with that, we are going to conclude the gut microbiome series. Uh, we got we talked about a lot of really amazing things and covered a lot of science and different supplements you can do and different foods you can eat and of course different ways to focus your perception of your mind so hopefully you got a lot out of this as always please subscribe so that you can keep up with updates for whenever i release new videos leave comments if you have something to say and we can continue the discussion there make sure you like this video if you enjoyed it and share it with anyone who you think might like it I also have a Patreon account in the About section of this page. If you enjoyed this content and you want to throw a few bucks my way, it would be greatly appreciated. No obligation to do so. I appreciate your support either way. And with that, stay awesome, you guys. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and we will talk again soon. Peace.